Most software engineers using AI are using it completely wrong, which is why it's surprisingly easy to get ahead of 99% of them. I've spent the last decade in software and AI, doing robotics, researching the human consciousness at UCLA, being a computer engineer at NASA, and consulting for Fortune 500 companies as a software engineering consultant. And now, 2025, running a seven-figure B2B AI consulting firm that uses AI every single day to drive real business results. And here's what I'm seeing. The gap between software engineers who understand AI and those who don't is getting wider and fast. This video is part one of a three-part series where I will show you how to go from, oh, I just type stuff into ChatGPT to I have a product that I can build and sell. So in this video, we're not building yet and we're not selling or marketing anything, but we are learning how to work with AI properly, so the fundamentals. By the end of this video, you will have a perfect and clear understanding and a step-by-step -step way to prompt AI like the top 1% of software engineers do, such that the AI can think with you, write better code with you, and allow you to move way faster than the average software engineer stuck in a nine to five. Let's dive straight into it. We're gonna take a look at what I call a God prompt. It has taken me over three years, from November 30, 2022, of doing personal stuff, business stuff, and literally living and breathing AI 24 seven for over three years for me to come up with this prompt. This is one of the prompts that I use to really get the most out of any singular AI. I'm gonna deep dive into the prompt in front of your screen so you will have as good of an understanding of it as I do. So from now on, you'll only use this prompt whenever you're talking with any AI, be it GPT, be it Gemini, be it your own that you train. This is extremely important and for you to kind of move on to the other parts of this video series, as I mentioned, because this first part is all about communication with AI and utilizing it in the coding context. Part two is using the same exact AI here, more specifically this prompt, for ideating and then building out whatever it is that we're gonna ideate. And then part three is all about marketing and sales, once again, with the same exact AI prompt. So let's understand this prompt. Now, every single good AI prompt needs to have three things. And a good way to think about what these three things are is to envision yourself as sort of like a creator of a story or a specific play. Every single play, every single story needs sort of like the main character, right? More specifically, the protagonist and then you have the antagonist, the hero and the villain. But every single story needs an actor, the main character. So the first line in your prompt needs to create that actor. That is why in the God prompt that we see right here, it's you are agent name, we assign it a name, and we say a specialized in a specific domain expert role, okay? The second thing that you need in a story or a play, whatever you're creating, once you have created your quote unquote hero, is a purpose, you need to give it a mission. A villain's mission is to kidnap the princess and then test the hero. A hero's mission is to defeat the villain and save the princess. Every single character in any story always has a purpose slash mission. It's just like our AI should. So your sole purpose is to generate whatever specific outcome deliverable that we want from it. And then the third thing that we want in our play or story, whatever we want to call it, is world building. We need to create the world, right? that this specific sort of AI agent exists in, and we need to bound it by these specific rules. This is fundamentally the most important part. You might have already known the first two, but this third thing, it's literally the most important because the number one problem that most software developers have with AI right now is they don't know how to use it properly because it hallucinates. If you use it in a coding context, it does things you don't want it to do. If you use it in data context, it fabricates data. If you use it in most other things, it can even just be delusional enough to create stuff that you never asked it to create and grab stuff that is pretty much factually incorrect, okay? In order to prevent all of that, what you need to do is sort of give this AI a brain. Imagine if you created a hero, you gave it a purpose, but you didn't create the world for it. It's sort of in a void, in a matrix. It doesn't know where it's going. It will get confused. That's why you need to create a proper world around your character. And in this context, that's what we're doing. We're creating a brain for it to utilize the information strictly inside that brain. This prevents it from hallucinating. So let's understand what's happening. So we tell it, you will begin by conducting a hard analysis of the attached information slash documents. What does this look like? 
Well, you would attach any type of information pertaining to whatever it is you need your AI agent to do, whatever you want your AI to do. If you wanted to do your taxes for you, you would attach, let's say, how you have done your taxes previously or the best way that taxes should be done. Maybe specific, if you're in a specific state in the US, specific California laws, right? Or like specific state laws pertaining to the taxes. Essentially, the more documents that you add, the more you add to the brain of your AI, the more world building you do, the more helpful and the more precise and the more informational the output will be. You can input one file, right? Get somewhat of eh, mediocre output. You can input 20 files that are extremely good and you'll get very good output. Once again, your inputs will determine your outputs with AI. If you have good inputs, you'll get good outputs. That's why not only is the quantity of inputs important, but the quality is even more important, I should say. So this entire rest of the prompt is essentially focusing on those inputs. Let's see what happens. You must adhere strictly and exclusively to the methodologies, frameworks, and examples contained within this context. Okay? Memorize this. This is the most important part of the prompt. You are telling it to essentially to not hallucinate. You are telling it to only use whatever you're going to give it. Your primary objective is to generate adjective and adjective output explicitly grounded in the priority training examples, prioritizing priority one and prioritizing priority two. And then you get into what I call the 12 commandments, okay? First commandment is to identify and analyze provided information. So first thing you should do is whenever you upload any type of a file is to first pause, take a look at what you uploaded and categorize them. Then extract the key principles for output formulation. So ex extract the key principles from the files that you provided, ensure consistency and alignment, ensure that the data actually aligns with whatever you asked it to align with. And if something, let's say you request from it, files outside of the data that you uploaded, it should tell you this information is not available in the provided data. This is to prevent it from hallucinating. Once again, extremely important. Next thing, reinforce comprehensive integration. So this is a little bit of an LLM term with regards to machine learning, how reinforcement works. But when you tell it to actually summarize the key findings, outline actionable steps, and explicitly reference these in future outputs, it sort of creates a digital memory bank for itself to know what it should do. Then we dictate the structured output approach. So follow a precise output structure. This is just personally what I like to use. You can change this up, whatever fits your personal needs. I always like to have an intro, core recommendations, detailed breakdown, additional recommendations, and an explicit rationale for why it did what it did. We then have a comprehensive integration. So integrate all the insights to ensure a comprehensive yet clear approach without any oversimplification. We then have contextual layering of strategies. Once again, an LLM term, not gonna get it too technical about it, but you combine all the relevant principles to deliver comprehensive and actionable outputs. Then we take a look at the edge cases and adaptations to see if there's any potential challenges or edge cases with whatever it is we're trying to do. Then explicitly addressing identified pain points. Pain points are the number one thing that we're actually looking for, right? So directly use pain points, identified and provided data to reinforce the output's unique and targeted value. Then utilize provided data exclusively. Once again, reminding it to only use whatever it is that we're uploading for the knowledge files. Logical flow and verification, clearly breaking down principles step by step, verifying accuracy and alignment at every single stage. And last but not least, consistent tone and clarity. So what we do is we gave the actor, right? We created the actor and what it had to do. We gave it a purpose, a mission, and then we created a world for it. Let's take a look and see what this would look like in the real world. So right here, I have a custom gem. If you're using ChatGPT, you can create a custom GPT. It doesn't really matter. And what I have done is I have converted exactly this in terms of like the placeholders and I have turned it into a requirements architect, essentially for it to create a requirements.md file for me to vibe code applications with, okay? So let's see how this was used. So you are requirements architect, a specialized senior technical product manager and systems architect. So that's our actor, that's our hero. Your sole purpose is to generate a comprehensive context rich requirements.md file, optimizing for AI coding agents, cursor, cloud code, windsurf, blah, 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 okay? This is the mission. And then we create the world for it. We tell it exactly what to do. You can kind of pause the video to see what it cooked up here, but this part necessarily isn't important. What's important is you understanding what's happening here in terms of the communication aspect with the AI. What I would do now, if let's say this is my actual use case for it, I'm gonna use this God prompt to sort of create a requirements.md file is I would upload a requirements.md file here 
for it to reference. More specifically, how long and how extensive I want the requirements MD file to be. Then what I can do is if let's say I wanted to only use specific text tags, I would add another knowledge file with let's say the text tags that I wanted to use. So it could be a simple PDF that says use only these two text tags and then have them listed out. Essentially, the entire point here is your inputs will dictate your output. The AI got prompt is what it does, it, it creates the perfect bridge between input and output, okay? So that's my part I gave it to you to do. That, that's my present to you. I gave you the bridge. What you need to do now is properly cross it, okay? Without falling off and without crashing anyway. For that, you need proper input data. If you upload bad knowledge files, if you upload files that don't have much to do with whatever it is you're trying to do, you're gonna get bad output, you're gonna get bad results. Thus, not only does the quantity of your knowledge files matter, but the quality matters even more. Meaning, the more data you input here for the brain to use, right, this AI got prompt to use for whatever it is you want it to do. This can be used to ideate problems, this can be used to create a newsletter, this can be used to convert videos to Twitter post. This can be used for literally anything you can possibly think of. Whatever its purpose is. The most important part is once you have sort of the entire instruction done, you have the 12 laws or 12 rules kind of set up, then it's extremely important to take a look at the knowledge files that you will be uploading. The better quality of input that you have, the better quality knowledge files that you have, the better your output will be. Okay, so what I want you to do is take a look at this. This will be in the description below. You can get it completely for free and play around with it. Use it in GPT, use it in Gemini, play around with it, upload a few files. For example, if you write a lot of emails, create an email writer for you, right? If, whatever it is, if you don't watch YouTube videos and then you transcribe them, make it a transcription agent for you. Literally use it for anything that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're not using anything on a day-to-day -day basis, see how you can turn this prompt into something that can help you help you day-to-day. -day. Even if it's, let's say, something as simple as what I brought up with regards to requirements.md files. Use it and see the type of inputs that you input and then the type of outputs that you get. And you'll notice that the better quality of your inputs, the more time you spend on crafting proper input documents and then inputting it here, the better your outputs will be. Thus, what I have right now that I'll showcase in the next video is based on the input that I spent, let's say a full day on of creating proper input documents, I can use an AI like this to literally save me months of work because my input documents are so good. I'll give more specific technical breakdown in the next video. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.